Hey folks, welcome back to Penalty Box Woodshop, and today I'm going to show you how to build these overhead storage shelves with sliding doors. So if you're looking to improve storage in your woodshop or garage, stay tuned and we'll show you exactly how. For each 8 foot long by 3 foot wide shelving unit, I used approximately 10 2x4s, 2 2x6s, 1 sheet of half inch plywood, and 1 sheet of quarter inch plywood all of which you can get at any big box store that is local to you. Whenever I'm using dimensional 2x4s, I like to run them through my planer for a few passes on each edge to take off the rounded edges. This isn't needed, but it's something I like to do for a more finished look. Using my table saw, I went ahead and cut one half of an inch off the width of two 2x4s and then set them aside for later. Then I lowered my blade to half of an inch high and set my fence at a quarter of an inch from the blade. Next, I cut a groove down one edge of two 2x4s two and then placed the opposite face against the fence and cut a second groove on the same edge. These grooves will be used for the sliding doors that will be installed later in the project. Before adjusting the fence, I went ahead and made the same cuts on a scrap piece of 2x4 to use as a test piece. I made slight adjustments with my fence until the groove was wide enough on the test piece for the quarter inch plywood that I'll be using for the sliding doors. Once my fence was set, I ran the two boards back through to widen each dado. Next, I measured the area above my garage door and decided that the bottom of the shelves needed to be at 29 inches from the ceiling. This will be so that the garage door will clear the bottom of the shelves as it's opened. If you're building your shelves for yourself, then remember you'll have to get your own measurements and clearance for your garage door or whatever area you're putting them in. Each ceiling can be higher or lower depending on where you live and what your area looks like. I measured and made marks along the wall so that I knew where to align the bottom of my board. The good thing about using the area above the garage door is that there should be a header board running along the top edge of your door and you will not have to search for studs to attach it to. I used 3 inch screws to attach one of the boards that I previously narrowed by half an inch at the table saw to the wall aligning the bottom of the board to the marks on the wall. I then started laying out my marks on the ceiling for my next board. I measured the distance from the end of the board that I just attached to the wall to the nearest adjacent wall and then I made a mark on the ceiling at the same distance. This will ensure that my board on the wall and the board on the ceiling will line up. I then made marks on the ceiling three feet from the wall with the garage door and I also made marks at each stud. I then aligned a 2x4 with my marks and attached it to the ceiling using 3 inch screws. Over at the miter saw, I cut four 29 inch long pieces from 2x4s. The length of these boards should be the same measurement that you decided your shelves should be from the ceiling to the bottom of the shelf. These boards will be used as vertical supports. I used 3 inch screws and attached two of these vertical support boards to the ends of the board that I just secured to the ceiling. Next, I attached one of the boards with the dados for the doors to the bottom of the vertical supports. After that, I attached the second board with the dados at the top of the vertical supports. I attached one end and measured the distance from each board with the dados. 
Before attaching the opposite end, I ensured that the boards were the same distance apart as the opposite side. This will ensure that the doors will slide equally and easily across the entire length of the shelf. I then attached two equally spaced vertical supports to the front and made sure that they were square to the horizontal boards. Next, I attached the second board that was previously narrowed by half an inch at the table saw to the bottom of the board with the dados. I aligned the bottoms of the board so that the half inch difference in the two boards was at the top. This is so that the plywood for your floor will rest on top of this board once it's installed. I measured the distance between the two bottom boards and cut four 2x4s to that length. I cut half of an inch off two of the boards and drilled two pocket holes on each end of all four. I attached the two narrow boards to the ends of the inside boards of the shelf and the two others equally spaced in the center. I placed the two in the center flat with the pocket holes facing up so that they will be hidden after the plywood floor is installed. I measured from the wall to the inside of the bottom dado board to get the width for the floor, and I cut 3 quarter inch plywood to size using my track saw. This track saw is really handy when it comes to breaking down large sheet goods, and if you'd like to check it out, I'll put a link to it down in the description section below, as well as a link to all the other tools I used in this project. Anytime you use those links, it supports the channel, and I really appreciate it. I slid the 3 quarter inch plywood into place for the floor and screwed it down using 2 inch screws. The floor should rest on top of the board attached to the wall and flush with the dado boards on the outside. I got the measurement for the width of the doors by measuring from dado board to dado board and adding 3 quarters of an inch. I measured and cut the doors to length so that they were long enough to fill the area between each vertical support and extend behind each one by a few inches on each side. I laid all three doors on top of each other and drilled a finger hole approximately 3 inches in from each side and midway up. Having a finger hole on each side made the doors match and makes it possible to slide the doors to either the left or the right when opening or closing them. Now you can slide your doors into place with the two outside doors in the outside dados and the center door in the inside dado.
I measured and cut a piece of 2x4 to attach between the wall and the ceiling board. Depending on where your studs are located, this board can be screwed directly to the ceiling or you can use pocket hole screws like I did. This board is to act as a backer so you can frame in each end. I then cut two more vertical pieces and attached them using my nail gun. These are not for support so screws are not necessary. For the horizontal pieces, I used a 2x6 for the bottom piece so that it stood proud of the floor and gave me a lip to attach my quarter inch plywood in the next step. Once the end was framed up, I measured and cut a quarter inch piece of plywood to cap the end from the inside. Once this was done, I moved over to the opposite end and framed it up as well. To give it a more finished look, I measured and cut 2x6s for the top area between the vertical supports and 2x4s for the bottom. With the final trim pieces completed, these shelves are done and ready to be filled up. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this build. And if you did, check this video out because I'm sure you'll love it. And if you have any questions, throw them down in the comment section below. Also, there'll be a link in the description section to my website that'll have a step-by-step -step tutorial for this as well. You'll have a good day.